Hey y'all, welcome and welcome back. It is finally time for me to talk about Monster High Generation 3. I have been wanting to talk about this for literally ages. We've known it's going to be happening for quite a long time, but the actual like official news that we've been getting has been coming in at such like a trickle of a pace. <laughs> like we'll hear about the castings for the live action movie and we have a little bit um, of a hint towards the animation for the show and we're getting like music videos on YouTube, but the dolls, like the part that I'm personally most excited about, every single doll has been leaked. Like every single doll that they are planning on releasing in the very near future had been leaked for ages. But I'm so anxious about my channel and using anything that's not an official stock photo in terms of visuals, because I just don't want to give Mattel or MGA or whatever doll company is involved at the time any excuse to take down my video or give me like a copyright claim or anything like that. I'm really paranoid about it. So I've been waiting to talk about the entirety of Monster High Generation 3 until we got stock photos. And finally, that's happened. I literally, like I've been waiting so long. I'm so excited to be able to actually talk about this. We finally got some stock photos. So we're finally gonna dig into it. We don't have stock photos for every single character, but like I've waited long enough. So it is it is what it is. It's what we're gonna have to use. I will have sources in the description down below for all of the stock photos. That I'll be showing here as like examples and stuff. So yeah, that'll be in the description if you want any of my sources. But as far as the actual meat of the video goes, there are three things that I want to talk about when it comes to the latest rendition of Monster High. We have the live action movie, we have the animation for the show, and then we have the dolls. I'm gonna save my actual opinions on the redesigns for the dolls just because like I said, that's kind of the thing that is most interesting to me or most relevant to me. I usually don't consume doll media or like shows as much as I do just enjoy the dolls. So I'm going to be saving my personal opinions for that section, but I do want to touch on the other aspects of the latest Monster High reboot, mostly because I think we need to talk about how the fandom has been acting. I will say as like a warning of sorts, I know pretty much every single video of mine I try to make family friendly just so like anyone can enjoy it. Um, but my videos are aimed primarily at adults. I make them for other adult collectors and in this one I already know I'm going to be cursing because like I just sat down, I just got started, and I'm already starting to get heated, like I haven't even said anything. Uh, so just be prepared for that if that is something that you don't enjoy, I guess. But let's kick it off with talking about the movie. Um, I know the whole thing, minus I believe the CGI aspects of it, has been leaked online. I haven't seen it because if I see it, I want to see it like as it's intended to be seen, fully done with like the CGI and everything. And yeah, I just, I didn't feel like going and looking for the leak and viewing it that way. I'm not really surprised that it got leaked um, if Mattel and Nickelodeon don't have their security up to keep that from happening. Someone online is going to try to get it, you know, so I'm not really surprised. I think it's a little bit disappointing just because it definitely ruins the surprise for a lot of adult collectors, but like, oh well, I guess that's kind of my feelings on that. <laughs> Beyond that, like more minor issue relatively, I'm honestly completely disgusted by how the fan base reacted to the reveals for the live action movie cast. This was the first time that we saw the new redesigns for Generation 3 of Monster High, and to say that people went feral is not an understatement, and I wish that I could be using that in a more positive way, but like, it was bad. It's okay to not like it. Like, that's gonna be a theme throughout this whole video. It's okay if you don't like Generation 3. I don't really care, you know, like, that doesn't affect me personally. But you cannot like something and not be completely vile. And these cast members were viciously attacked by people who just don't like the new redesigns. And I think it's disgusting. I think that we're adults and we should know better than to attack someone. And especially the cast members, because like, spoiler alert, they're not the ones who created the redesigns for these dolls. Like you have producers involved, directors, obviously Mattel in terms of the doll side of things was heavily involved. There's so many other people who are involved in the actual design process, but it was the cast members who took the brunt of the bullying and the brutality from the Monster High fan base. <laughs> and it's just because they're available. They're literally the faces of the Monster High live action movie. So of course they're going to get attacked, but I just think it's really pathetic that that's how some people reacted. Obviously I know the whole Monster High fan base was not like that, but I really wanted to address this because I just, I think pathetic is probably the best word for it. It is so sad to me that adult fans who liked Generation 1 better are so upset that they forget how to be human beings and just be kind to another person, especially people who realistically didn't have that much to do with the redesigns in general. Like, you're just attacking the wrong people. You shouldn't be attacking anybody at all, but to attack the wrong people is especially stupid to me. And I just want to get this out of here. In general, 
again, going to be a theme throughout this video. If you don't like Generation 3, that is okay. If you are incapable of voicing that opinion in a respectful way without being disgusting, you're not welcome. Like, I don't want you here. <laughs> I don't want to deal with those kind of people. I don't want to entertain those kind of people because, like, obviously you cannot critically think like an adult and I'm not interested in engaging in that. So, like, goodbye. I don't think any of you are here. Like, <laughs> the people who are actually subscribed to me, I know, are really nice people for engaging with you in the comments. But just in case someone happens to see this video that was acting like that, this is your time to exit. Like, this is not the video for you. But moving on from that, I do also want to say that I think it is especially baffling that the cast are under fire for the Monster High redesigns, when if you want to have a problem with anybody involved with a live action movie, it should probably be the director. I have seen some people talk about this, but the director of the live action Monster High movie is Todd Holland, and the source of the discourse there comes from the fact that he also created the 1998 movie Krippendorf's Tribe, I believe I'm saying that correctly. I haven't watched the movie, but to my understanding, it includes a lot of racial stereotypes against multiple groups. Like, it's not even just racist in one way, it's racist in a lot of ways, which is extra terrible, and it's made some lists for the most racist movies of all time. I've seen a lot of argument back and forth as far as whether or not Todd Holland has grown enough to be, like, forgiven for creating that movie or having a hand in creating that movie in the past. I'm just a white dude, and I'm not a member of any of the groups that he offended with that movie, so it's not my place to say whether he's grown or not. My point here is that if you are going to be mad about somebody in the production of the Monster High live action with Generation 3, it's not the cast that you should be focused on, and I'm not at all saying that you should be spewing hate at Todd Holland. Like, that's not the solution. Please don't do that. Like, if you disagree with his actions, that makes sense. I get it. But, like, you can do that in a nice way, right? Like, you can do that in an adult way. So don't spew hate at him. Like, I don't want anyone seeing this video to go off and, like, send hate towards him. I'm just saying that people are literally attacking the cast of this movie because they don't like the redesigns, when the fact that the director is also a director of a very racist movie is a much bigger issue. And maybe I'm just, like, unfortunately on the wrong part of the internet. But while I did see people talking about that, I saw a lot less of that than I saw people attacking the cast. And I think that's even sadder. Like... It's just layers of layers of layers of really bad misbehavior. And again, I, I really want to stress that I know this is not the entire Monster High fandom. It was just kind of shocking to see how many of us were reacting in such a sad way. And it made me less proud to be part of the Monster High fandom. So that's kind of my feelings on the movie. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know if I'm going to see it. Like, it's not aimed at me. It is aimed at children, which is fine. You can like it or not like it from what I've seen of like the few little snippets that I've seen and like the trailers and stuff. It looks fine. It doesn't look like it'd be the most amazing thing ever. It doesn't look like it'd be the worst thing ever. It's not for me and it's not for other adults. Like if you enjoy it, that's fine. Like that's great if you as an adult collector can enjoy it. But I think we need to keep in mind it's literally airing on Nickelodeon. It is airing for another generation of kids to be engaged in Monster High. So like all of this vitriol towards the movie just doesn't make any sense to me. Like it, it's fine if you don't like it, but the reactions are just so overblown and it's just so much. So yeah, not a fan of that. That's kind of the, the summary of my feelings on the movie is do better, be kinder, chill out. <laughs> I almost forgot to say, actually, I do have one opinion on the movie. I think it's interesting that everyone is so upset that Draculaura also practices witchcraft in this rendition of Monster High. Like, she is still a vampire. It's not like they replaced her and made her a witch instead of a vampire. It's just, like, an addition to her character, and a lot of people are really upset about this, which I think is so weird. I don't know. Like, I don't mind it. I'm not upset by it. Honestly, I think the idea of a world in which monsters are real, where witchcraft is, like, a human habit, and so therefore it's kind of an act of teen rebellion for Draculaura to get involved with it, is an interesting concept. It is not the same as the old Monster High, and I think that's the hang-up for a lot of people. But looking at it as a new thing, I don't think that that's a terrible concept. I think it's kind of interesting and I think it'd be cool to explore. So like, that's my only actual opinion on the movie. But now now we can move on to the animation. When it comes to that, I do want to say that the music videos being released on YouTube are not the same animation that the show is going to have. That's kind of a general animation style that Mattel uses for like the Barbie music videos and now the Monster High music videos. Just anything that's like a music video they're posting to YouTube, they use that same style of animation. And realistically, the only like leaks that we've gotten for the actual show is not even an animation. It's just kind of renders of what the 3D characters are going to look like for the show. 
and I think they look cute, honestly. Like, I'm not too upset about them. I know that cute is, like, a very appropriate word, and that's kind of what's upsetting some people. It's definitely a lot cuter than Generation 1 of Monster High. I know. I do think, though, it's leagues better than uh, this, like, original reboot, Generation 2. That was too far in the cute direction. I think this is a good balance between if they want to make it a little cuter and still retaining some of that spookiness. Plus, I think there's a lot more detail involved. So overall, pretty solid. I do have two complaints. Um, first one is that Cleo, I know she's supposed to be kind of bronzy in color. And while I'm absolutely not at all upset by her darker complexion, I think it actually looks really, really good for her. Uh, I think the amount of shine kind of just makes her look like really sweaty or like she's used too much highlighter a la like 2016 makeup YouTube. So not a huge complaint and it could look a lot better when she's actually animated versus just the rendering. But I love the darker complexion, just maybe like a little bit less shine. And then Heath, yikes. That's the only one I think is actively bad. And it's weird because honestly his design looks so out of place when you look at all of the other ones next to him. Like he literally looks like he was designed by a different person. He doesn't look like he fits in. It doesn't look good. Uh, so that one I'm not a fan of. But all the others, like, honestly, pretty solid. But with that out of the way, it means we can finally talk about the dolls, which is the main event for me. Once again, I feel the need to reiterate that these are dolls, which means that they are toys, which means that they are marketed towards, like, the main base of toy consumers, which is children or, you know, parents buying for their children. So they're not for us, technically. Obviously, Mattel knows that there are a lot of adult collectors and adult fans of Monster High, but their primary target audience isn't us. So like, I have to go into it looking at that, right? I have to go into it through the lens of I can enjoy this and it's totally fine if other adult collectors do enjoy it, but it's not a line of dolls that is marketed at adult collectors. So like, that's the, the frame of mind that we're going into this, right? Like we're, we're looking at it through the frame of this is primarily for kids. <laughs> and with that in mind, I think that again, the fandom is like, really acting up in a weird way and unable to kind of comprehend that this is a doll line made for kids and they're just kind of acting in a really abysmal way so we're gonna get into it um to kind of start talking about this before i get into like each doll specifically i do want to talk about my general feelings and in order to do that <laughs> um i'm gonna go on like a little personal anecdote for a second here please bear with me because it is relevant like i'm not just sharing a story um, but I want to talk about TikTok for a second. <laughs> so when TikTok, like right around the time that Musical.ly became TikTok, I thought it was stupid. I thought it was a dumb app and that it was really cringy to like it. And I was around a lot of people who also thought TikTok was stupid. And that was just kind of the environment that I was in, right? It was judging TikTok. I'm happy to say I've come a long way since being so judgmental, but I digress on that point. The thing that made me change my mind was one day when I was randomly watching Jenna Marbles on YouTube back when she was still on YouTube. And I've tried to find the video that this was, but I cannot find it. If you know what I'm talking about, definitely let me know in the comments below which video it is because I'd love to find that specific video. But she was just talking about TikTok on her YouTube channel, right? And Jenna was kind of comparing it to Vine and how when Vine first came out, people who were older were like, oh yeah, this is stupid and boring and it's a dumb app and people who use Vine were looked down upon <laughs> and like being made fun of just for enjoying something. And now she was correlating that to a lot of people are doing it again with TikTok and making fun of something that isn't hurting anybody, but that is bringing a lot of people joy just because it's different and like we're afraid of change. And basically what she was trying to get across was just that just because something is different and new and not necessarily designed for you doesn't mean that it's bad. Other people can enjoy it or you can kind of like get over yourself and also enjoy it. Or if you don't, that's okay, but you don't have to be mean about it, you know? And seeing that video, like I'm not trying to be dramatic, literally changed my outlook on so many things. Like I try so hard to not be as judgmental as I was back then because honestly, as long as whatever you're doing isn't hurting anybody, who cares? Like if it makes you happy and you're not harming others around you, do what you want to do, you know? <laughs> like that's that's it like if you can find happiness in something then it's worthwhile and it's valid and so that's kind of how I try to look at things now is like if it's not harmful it's fine and like maybe it's not for me but I don't need to say that especially in a mean way I can just not like it and let you live a happy life and like that's it I don't know it's kind of like a basic human decency thing but that really really changed me and my outlook and I kind of see that now with Monster High where it's like just because it's not the Monster High that I grew up with and that a lot of other adult collectors grew up with doesn't mean that it's bad. Yeah, the reboot was bad, but 
it was terrible quality and they obviously weren't trying with the designs like they with generation two were making dolls that you could see they didn't care about and that was the problem but with generation three so far it looks like the dolls are pretty quality they even have more articulation than the original monster high did so it's like as long as they're putting care into something even if you don't like it even if it's not for you it's gonna make people happy and like people are going to like it and it's okay and just because it's different doesn't mean that you have to hate it like if you like generation one that's great i also really like generation one but there's a way to feel that way without spewing hatred out and so like that's kind of what i want to get across in this video is like it's okay to not like something but the monster high fan base on every level has been really really disappointing with these new dolls and yeah i just i think it's sad that we have to kind of shit on something that's making people happy just because it's not what we grew up with. Like it can be different and also still good. Those two are not mutually exclusive concepts. So that's the lens that I'm looking at this through. <laughs> so you might've guessed that my opinions on the dolls are gonna be fairly positive just because I'm really trying to look at it like a reimagining of Monster High. Like I know that they're not making Playline generation one dolls really. Obviously they have the Creep Productions and they have the Skelector dolls and those are generation one molds. But for the most part, Monster High is gonna be using these new molds. And so instead of being like upset about that, I'm just trying to look at it through kind of a better lens of like, you know what, maybe this is okay, even though it's different. So with that in mind, let's look at the dolls. So I have to start with Cleo. She's definitely my favorite. Like I said, I love the darker skin tone for her. The doll doesn't look quite as dark, at least in the stock photos, but maybe that's just like a photo thing. But I, I honestly really love this design. I love her hair. I love her new pet. I love her outfit. Her shoes aren't like my favorite. And I think that that's the most criticized piece of clothing for this Cleo. But overall, I think she looks really solid. And when this doll first leaked, she was like the first one to leak. I was so hype and I was so excited because I was like, if this is what Generation 3 is really going to look like, I'm going to like it. Like, this is cute. I love it. Very, very happy with her and so excited to be able to buy her. That was a quick one, but the next doll is Draculaura. And I have a lot more to say about Draculaura than I did Cleo. So like, buckle up, I guess. For me, I love her design. I think it's really cute. I think it's very Draculaura appropriate. I love her hair. I love her outfit. I literally love everything about her. And I love that she's curvy, but that's a really big issue for a lot of fat phobic fans. <laughs> I ranted about this in my Instagram stories, but like, I am still mad. <laughs> so sorry if you already saw that, but I'm going to be kind of repeating that rant here because it's just so stupid to me. First of all, the Draculaura doll is not even fat. She's just curvy. Yeah, she's a lot bigger than the Generation 1 dolls that were hyper stylized to be super skinny. And that's fine if you like those, but Draculaura's doll in Generation 3 is not fat. And if you honestly think that she's a fat doll, I beg of you to go outside and look at real people instead of just staring at people on Instagram because like in the real world, that is not a fat doll. But even if she were fat, who fucking cares? Like, why are you so upset about this? Fat people can be pretty. Like, fat and ugly are not synonyms. Fat people can be just as pretty as skinny people. And it's like, it doesn't affect you. Like, who gives a shit if she's a fat doll? I'd like to point out again that this line is aimed at kids. And in the social media entrenched world that we live in, I definitely don't think that dolls are the leading cause of kids starting to feel hatred towards their bodies. But I don't think having a curvy doll is going to hurt anything. I grew up as a little girl who started dieting way before I should have been dieting and constantly being told how I wasn't as skinny as I should be. And I did irreparable damage to both my mind and body because of that. Like damage that I literally am never going to completely escape. I can get better, but like I'm never going to fully recover from how I grew up in terms of body image. And I'm not saying that this doll existing when I was a kid would have changed everything and like magically made it better because that's a silly way to look at things. That's not how the real world looks. But I do think it would have been nice to see a doll that I think is so stunningly cute and beautiful and like that I wanted to have because I love the way she looks and see a body that looks closer to how mine might have. And all I can think about with Draculaura is that there is going to be at least one kid out there who buys this doll. And even if only for a second, they're gonna have a self-esteem boost because of the fact that she has a curvier body type and they're gonna feel better about themselves. And even if that literally only happens once, it's worth it. Like it is worth it because it's not hurting you to have a curvy doll on the market. If you don't like her, don't buy her, but you don't have to shit on her just because you can't handle fat people existing. 
Like, it's just so stupid and so sad. And the fact that some people don't have anything better to do than fat shame a literal piece of plastic is so pathetic to me. Like, you have to have something better to do with your time. If you don't, you really need to reassess yourself because it's like, it's not hurting you. It's gonna help at least one person. And like, I don't know, overall, just chill the fuck out. It's just a doll. It's just a piece of plastic. You don't have to hate everything and everyone that has an ounce of fat on their bodies. It's just so ludicrous to me. And that might be one of like the biggest things that I'm ashamed of in terms of this fandom is fat shaming a literal fucking doll. Like, what? It's not worth it. It is okay to have a preference for the stylized skinny bodies of generation one, but you can just say that you like the G1 mold. Like, and you can leave it at that. You don't have to be in the comments being like, she's so fat and ugly, bring back the old Draculaura, or like, why the fuck would they make a doll fat? Like, you need to reassess yourself. You have got to calm down. It is not that serious. And it, like I said, it's going to mean something to somebody in a way that it means much more than it does to you. So like, that's my thoughts on um, fat Draculaura. On a much, much lighter note, people are also upset that she has split dyed hair instead of her streaks in her hair. First of all, we also have uh, like leaks for the Gorgonizer Draculaura doll who does have pink and black streaks in her hair instead of the split dye. But also like, I'm so confused by this complaint. Looking at generation one, let's take Claudine as an example because she changed her hair a lot. She had short hair, she had long hair, she had medium hair, and then she had brown and purple and I think pink and green. Like the dolls change their hair all the time, not even just in generation three, but established in generation one, they constantly were changing haircuts, styles, and colors. So like, you're gonna complain about the split dye hair when it's obvious that Monster High is going to have different hairstyles for her because they've always done that and they literally already are doing that in generation three. Like, the people who are complaining about her having split dye hair feel to me like they are grasping at straws to have something to be upset about with this doll. And honestly, it's just not worth your time. It is just hair. Like, it's okay. It's just hair on a doll who's gonna have different hairstyles. If you hate it that much, don't buy her. Or if you still buy her despite saying that you hate it that much, you can reroute her. Like, it's okay. Just take a breather. It's all right. <laughs> Speaking of breather, I kind of need to do that because I'm getting really heated. I need to inhale and exhale and like, it's okay. We gotta keep going. We're not done talking about this stuff. Okay, we are moving on to Claudine. I really like her. Again, I think that she looks cute. I know a lot of people are upset because she doesn't look like as fierce as she did in generation one. And I can definitely see that, but I don't think that the redesign is terrible. I think it's just kind of a different vibe for Claudine than we're maybe used to. One big thing that I wanna talk about is the fact that she has glasses. I love this. Like I was so excited to see this because obviously I wear glasses. I literally have such bad eyesight that if I take my glasses off, I cannot see clearly a foot in front of me. So like I have to wear my glasses. <laughs> so to see a doll wearing them was really, really cool because it's not something that you see very often. You'll see a lot of sunglasses, but not a lot of eyeglasses. So it made me really excited, but I don't think that everyone feels the same way. Um, I've seen a lot of people who have already gotten their hands on generation three Claudine displaying her without glasses and taking the glasses off. And like, that's fine. I do understand it's your doll. You can display her how you want. It just kind of makes me sad, I guess. There was a study done by the Vision Impact Institute that revealed that three out of four people in the United States need corrective lenses, which means that they should be wearing either glasses or contacts in their daily lives. So like that's 75% of the US population that needs either glasses or contacts. So again, it's like, a representation that is not commonly seen in dolls of a doll having glasses. And I think it's really cool. So like, again, you can take the glasses off. I'm not trying to judge you if you do, but I really thought it was cool that she has glasses. And if I get her, I'm definitely gonna keep her in them. Cause like that made my heart feel a little bit fuller. <laughs> and then we have Frankie. They are this generation explicit non-binary representation and I am over the moon about it. I just think it's great that Monster High started off as a brand that kind of refused to let Garrett Sanders, the creator have explicitly queer dolls and now we have a leading character be non-binary i think that's great for them and overall their design i think is really cool too i love that they have a prosthetic leg and they're taller overall i just think that frankie in generation three has a lot of representation that we don't always see in dolls and i think that's amazing i've never really been a frankie fan but this might be the generation that finally makes me cave and buy a frankie doll because that's how excited i am about them so like mad props on their design i love that and then the last doll from generation three that we have stock photos for right now is laguna she probably has the biggest change of any Generation 3 design, and definitely people have differing opinions about that, which is fine. 
this is kind of how I have to think about this. Um, I'm going to use an anime example, so I'm sorry if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, but this is just a really easy way for me to explain it. If you are an anime fan, you'll, you'll understand. <laughs> I kind of think of it like Full Metal Alchemist and then Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. They're kind of two versions of the same story where they feature the same characters and the same basic premise, but they go off in slightly different directions and therefore have like slightly different endings. And I like both of the shows. I like Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood better, but I do think both of them are good and both of them can stand alone as their own show with an engaging plot and engaging characters and like they're both enjoyable, right? And another example, if you're not an anime fan, <laughs> my husband's really going to appreciate this one, uh, is Spider-Man. There's literally a movie called Into the Spider-Verse because there have been so many different Spider-Man renditions and like so many versions of the character and yeah I know like not all of them are Peter Parker like Peter Parker isn't every Spider-Man but there have been a lot of different shows that interpret Peter Parker slightly differently there's even three sets of movies that all have a different version of Peter Parker so like there's a lot of versions of Spider-Man and you can have a preference for one or the other but like you can separate them in your head as like the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man is not the same as the Tom Holland Spider-Man right and so I think if we can do that with Laguna it's not so bad if you look at it like they took G1 Laguna away from us and they ruined her design and where's my Laguna, yeah, you're gonna be upset about it. <laughs> but if you look at it as like a multiverse sort of scenario or an alternate universe scenario and you're just like, okay, yeah, G1 was that version of Laguna and then this is a different version of Laguna, I think if you can just frame it differently in your mind, it's not so bad. I do think she looks really cute. I love the gradient in her legs. I love the rainbow hair. Overall, like, I think it's a solid design for a doll, and I just think that it's one of those things that I could decide to be upset about and be like, yeah, well, I really liked G1 Laguna better, like, Generation 1 did it better. Or I can just be like, that Laguna also exists, and I can enjoy this one simultaneously. And I would rather enjoy both and be happy than, like, be bitter. So I'm trying to look at it that way. And I'm not trying to judge you if you genuinely can't or if you just, like, don't like this. But I guess I'm urging people to give it a try because I think a lot of people are too keen and too quick to go, well, it's not generation one, so it sucks. And like, you know, you can either be upset or you can try to be okay with it and either enjoy the generation one dolls that you do have or learn to like these, you know, like you can choose to look at it in a slightly better way. And I guess that's what I would like people to do is instead of getting like stuck being down in the dumps even if you like G1 better, and even if you never want to get any of the Generation 3 dolls, like, you don't have to be so aggressively negative, I guess. <laughs> Hello, editing me here. I literally forgot to add while I was filming this, the fact that I know for certain that some of y'all who are like, the new Monster High is shit, it's terrible, it's awful, are gonna turn around and buy these dolls the same way that with the Rainbow High mystery boxes with the shoes and bags, everyone was like, oh my god, they're too expensive, it's so bad, and then a bunch of doll influencers bought a fuck ton of them, and we're like, oh my gosh, they're so good. I know half the people who are like shitting on Monster High Generation 3 are gonna be exactly the same way and are gonna go out and buy all these dolls and sing their praises on social media, and that's even worse. Like, the hypocrisy is so irritating to me because it's like, if you don't like it, be nice about it, but you cannot like it, but flipping the switch to do whatever's like most popular or whatever is going to like go over the best on social media I think is so sad so like definitely forgot to say that but I wanted to include it because I do think that it's like an important point and something that is like particularly irritating to me so like I'm just gonna insert this clip in a video somewhere um there you have it like looking at Monster High it was literally a brand that was created to show us that different is okay it's okay if you're weird and your flaws make you fabulous and like you can be different. A lot of us took that and ran with it and it meant a lot to a lot of people that this was a doll brand that told you you didn't have to be like Barbie to be okay with who you are. And so for a fandom that was built on that to then turn around and shit on cast members for depicting a character version that they don't like or attack these dolls in truly genuinely nasty ways is just sad to me because it's like did you not fucking get the message from the first monster high like the whole message is that it's okay to be different and even if you don't like it you can be nice about it like that <laughs> that was the message from the original monster high and then we have these fans switching up and being like no generation three is shit and everyone involved is terrible it's like y'all literally missed the memo <laughs> 
even Garrett Sander, the literal creator of Monster High, is like down with this reboot. Like he's been posting positive things about Generation 3 and it's like Monster High was his brainchild. He made this shit and he's okay with it. So if you can't be okay with something that the literal creator is, it's like like you're more entitled than the actual creator of the brand is to have what you want. Hello? Like again, you cannot like it. But I feel like for you to be so fucking nasty about it, it just doesn't make sense. Like I don't think that you're a true Monster High fan if you can't accept something different as maybe not being for you, but like not being something to get all up in arms about. You know, like that that was the point. So those are kind of my feelings. I know this video probably came across as me just like singing nonstop praises for Generation 3. And that's not my intention. I don't think that I am going to buy every single doll. I know that we have leaks for the Creepover Party line. And I didn't like any of those dolls from that line. So I'm not going to buy any of those. I'm not going to get every single Generation 3 doll. I'm not going to think everything that Generation 3 does is perfect. But honestly, for the first set, I do think they're pretty solid. I think everything looks pretty okay. And I think that if this were a brand that we're just launching instead of a brand that we have like previous renditions for, people wouldn't be as upset about it. And I just think it's, I guess, healthier mentally to try to separate those two in your brain and be like, yeah, generation one existed and we got to enjoy it. And now another generation gets to enjoy this latest reboot of Monster High in a different way. And I can too. And like you can too. <laughs> it's just, I don't know. Overall, the negativity is what's been getting to me is that it's just such a level of negativity that I think is really telling and says a lot about the Monster High fandom and makes me sad because I feel like we didn't really absorb what like the lessons were that we were supposed to be taught from the original Monster High and it's just a lot, you know? I think there are good things and bad things about the Generation 3 reboot, but in general, I think as a fandom, we should be able to focus on the good instead of the bad instead of acting like the bad kind of boomers where we're sitting here constantly toting that back in our day things were better so everything now is like stupid. I don't want to be that person <laughs> and it makes me sad to see other people in the Monster High fandom being that person because like imagine being a kid right now who's excited for this or like who's going to be excited once they see the movie and then you hear adults around you who are also in the same fandom space as you being like yeah that thing you like it's fucking dumb like that would hurt. And I don't want to be that person, you know, like, I don't want to act like that. I cannot like it if I don't like it. Like, I don't like the creepover line. That's the extent of what I'm going to say. It's not for me. I don't like it, but I'm not going to be a dick. <laughs> so that wraps up all of my thoughts on kind of Generation 3 of Monster High so far. Sorry if this was long-winded and ranty and um, full of expletives and all of that. I just feel a lot of things. And I have been bottling this up for a while. Like I said, I've been wanting to talk about this for ages and I just like haven't felt like I was able to. So now it's all out there, all on the table. Too Long Didn't Watch is if you don't like it, that's fine, but don't be an asshole about it. And I would hope that all of you guys can like get on board with that. Like I said earlier in the video, all of you when I interact with you in the comments are super, super nice. So like, I can't imagine that any of you are acting like that, but like, I know that people who aren't subscribed when we watch these videos. So like, I guess those are the people that I'm trying to reach where it's like, you can be, upset in your own way you can be more negative towards the dolls but you don't have to be so vitriolic about it so that's the message for this video is that at the end of the day these are literally just pieces of plastic that are being designed for kids and i don't have patience for anybody who is reacting to that with uh extreme anger and negativity and just really inappropriate behavior so please do let me know down in the comments below what your thoughts are on generation three and kind of how the fan base has been acting. Now that I'm looking back on it, I did definitely talk a lot more about the Monster High fandom than I did about the dolls, but like that is just what kind of is important to me in this moment, so forgive me. But yeah, would love to hear all of your opinions. If you aren't subscribed, I do make videos every Monday and Thursday, so if you enjoyed this video for whatever reason, my ranting, you could subscribe and see even more ranting, <laughs> but I hope you guys enjoy the video. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day or your night or whatever it might be, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye guys.